I'm back home, guys. Let's see what I got from certain CXs. What can appear too many games? PS Too Many Games. Hello guys, welcome to another episode of PS Too Many Games. Hopefully with a new schedule starting this episode. <laughs> For those of you who didn't uh, watch the uh, 4 minute update I did about uh, last week as a recording of this. Uh, basically, between me and Dave we decided it's about time we started doing set days each week. 
So from now on, in theory, as long as we don't cock it up, which we probably will at some point. Cock okay. it. Uh, two episodes a week, uh, Thursdays and Sundays, with uh, special episodes being on Tuesdays. By special, I mean extra, extra episodes. So, that's the plan. Let's see if it actually works. <laughs> be honest, I don't know, I ain't got a clue. Uh, if we change the days, that means the Sundays and Thursdays were not popular. <laughs> Obviously, I'm completely shaved, I've got the baby face back on, look significantly younger, don't have the hobo beard anymore. It was getting a bit long. Yes, look at my shiny face. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, the hopefully the set days will help for this channel uh, because I, I like to get some normality in. Because sometimes I'm literally uh, me and Dave are just like flying by the uh, flying for like the wind. Some days we'll record an episode and I will literally edit it and put it up on the same day, like hours after recording. Sometimes it'll be like two weeks later. Uh, <laughs> Dave's more like um, methodical, or I literally just go for it. Record, edit, load. Up. <laughs> Brain died. So um, I have been away in the north for the last week. I stayed in Doncaster. Where are you from? Doncaster. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Donc Doncaster. Amazing. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to make this statement right now. If there's one place I'm going to live in New Yorkshire, like permanently live, it would probably be Doncaster. I don't know if I say the nice part of Doncaster, but Doncaster is a shockingly nice place. Like you actually look like taken care of. Uh, the, the the actual centre is a bit old, but the outskirts actually is. It's a nice town. It's a nice town. Good job, Doncaster. Seriously, I'm not taking the piss. It's probably the nicest town in Yorkshire. That's gonna piss a lot of people off, but fight me, fuck it, fight me. <laughs> My opinion, I, I enjoyed staying in Doncaster, I really did. Did I go to Doncaster CEX? No, mainly because A, getting to Doncaster CEX is kind of a pisser. B, didn't really have much I really wanted at the time. And C, I've already been there, I want to go somewhere different. And somewhere different we did. <laughs> right, so like last time I went away for a week, I went to like 10 CEXs. This time I was a little more moderate, only seven this time. I know, he's getting lazy. <laughs> but of the seven CX I went to, I, there were ones I could have gone to, like Mansfield, but they had nothing I wanted. So Mansfield got skipped. I'm sorry, Mansfield. I'm sure you wouldn't be a good CX, but you had fuck all I wanted. <laughs> you bastard. In all seriousness, I've started looking more for accessories, mainly like different color controllers, but lately my luck for finding them has been greatly, well, not greatly, terrible. It's been terrible luck for buying like multi-color controllers. Uh, Cause I need to find them all. There's still like five or six colors I need to find. I mean, I've obviously got the black one, silver one, pink one, but not red, no blue, no yellow, no green. Kind of annoyed by that. <laughs> so these are the seven CX I went to in the last week. Hopefully Dave will put something on a list on here. We'll go from one by one. So today we'll be talking about Worksop and Retford, but future episodes will be Scumthorpe. And I've forgotten the other four. <laughs> So I managed to actually go to 70, seven different CEXs this week. Uh, not planned, this happened because we are just going to certain places. For those of you in the Discord know exactly where I was going. Uh, for those of you who don't, mm. <laughs> But anyway, the seven CEXs I hit this last week as of the recording were Retford, Worksop, Scumthorpe, Crystal Peaks, Chesterfield, Sutton and Ashfield, and Catterick. Now, Carrick's a bit of a strange place because Carrick's basically a military base that has a town around it. <laughs> we'll get to that in a future episode. But today will be Worksop and Retford. Two different places, I must be honest. Uh, if anyone ever been to Worksop, Worksop was a, not so much a strange place. First of all, it, is, it was, and hopefully I'll show in the recording, the most dead town centre I've ever walked through. There was literally nobody there. It was depressing. Uh, I don't know why that was, but it made it easy. The car park I used had a total of four cars and it was free parking. And they still don't come to Worksop. So that must say something about Worksop. Not judging, it's just facts, this happened. <laughs> on the other hand, Retford, a place I'll be honest, I never even heard of until I saw it on a sign, was a, would I dare say, middle class small town? Kinda. Uh, 
there was a moment in the recording, and hopefully I got it recording, and hopefully Dave will splice it in. There was, I, I walked past this, this lady pushing a pram on the phone in one hand and holding a fag in the other hand, and I just got the Harry Enfield, like, joke. I am smoking a fag. <laughs> all in all, five games picked up from between both CEXs. Are they, like, top-end games? No, no, no. <laughs> Are they shovelware games I've been looking for some time? Ding! <laughs> and I mention this all the time. Sometimes finding the shovelware is actually a better point than finding some of the rare games because some of this stuff no one kept and it is hard to find. <laughs> so, especially one of these games. One of these games, for, some, for those who remember about a month ago on Lincoln, I was looking for this game and they didn't have it even though they had it online and it pissed me off. But I picked it up and am I happy to buy that game? No, but I needed it, so... Thumb in the middle? <laughs> so we're going to do our usual. Uh, Dave's going to be doing the editing for this one. Uh, for a, we'll throw a commercial on here. Dave will choose yet again. Dave's choice of commercials always. He always has my full support on everything he does. He knows that. <laughs> Sometimes uh, we'll put a joke in there, uh, take the piss out of me, and that's fair game. Because, to be honest, if you can't laugh at yourself, then who the hell can you laugh at? See the other half? <laughs> That's it, guys. Come on, off we go. Oh, school holidays. Yeah. I don't know where they get the energy. What's that? It's that stuff the kids eat. Mmm. Wow. Rated right level 10. Power Pack Switch Made Dairy Food really gets you going. Level 10. Well done, Max. And we are back. And the crowd goes mild. Yeah. <laughs> so with the new schedule, it's pr pretty much going to be... Sundays are probably going to be my... Not so much game-finding episodes, but uh, Sundays are most likely going to have like the CX's, the uh, last level game episodes. Basically the episodes where I've, I've found games I need for the collection. And Thursdays will either be a mixture of... CX roulettes because I'm going to start doing those, those again. Uh, talking about uh, collection issues and other random episodes. So Sunday will probably be more the main event of this channel, and Thursday will be like episodes I probably will do the editing on. We'll see by the views which who does the better editor, Dave. I mean, it's clearly Dave. Let's be honest about this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure about that? There's no competition on that one. <laughs> one more thing before we get into. So for those who have my online list, and I have an online list, it's on the Discord, you can, you can get it. You have to take this into account. Sometimes I will miss taking a game off that list. I'm not fantastically punctual on that one. I will remove them when I usually buy them, but sometimes I will forget because my memory is terrible. <laughs> so if I ever get a message like, this is on your list, you still need this game. Sometimes I look in the get I'll look in there and go, I've actually got that game. And I had to be like be go back embarrassing and go, Yeah, I've got that game, I've got the room full list. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and uh that is starting to happen a couple of times. Usually it's with the shovelware games, by the way. So if there's still shovelware on that list, there's a small chance I might have it, but I forgot to take it off that list. Rare games, there's a very high chance I still need those, so. Remember that, because my memory and my punctuality for checking that list is not great. It, it's good. It's just, it's just it's just not great. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get into the games. Speaking of which, the first game, to be perfectly honest, I thought I might have owned, but it was only one pound fifty, so I took the risk. And apparently, it's not on my wall. So either it's in my pile of games I, I need to like sort out. It's about forty of them right now. But hopefully I haven't got this. XS Junior League Soccer. I mean, this is about as shovelware-y as it gets. By the way, if you see the light, it's because the light's on. It is currently 8 o'clock and the sunshine outside is gone. So I'm going to need that for the uh, light. <laughs> anyway, am I happy to buy this game? From a shovelware standpoint, yes. From an actual like, adult standpoint, no. This is kind of depressing. But it, it's in good condition. The disc is actually in the game, so yeah. I will search for a manual, but I'm not going to search for a manual like hard. With mostly shuffleware games, 
it's impossible to find these manuals and only worth like a quid, £1.50, so it's not high on my list. I'll be real about that one. My rule of thumb is anything worth more like three or four pound up, I will demand a manual. Anything below that, I could probably just buy another one with a manual in the future. Nah. Yeah. And by the way, I do have a list of games I don't have, of like cheap games with no manuals. I think like 10 of them, but I do keep that list. That's how sad I am sometimes. <laughs> Second game from Workshop CEX uh, was uh, the game I've been looking for some time. Sadly, I finally found it. Lucinda Green's Equestrian Challenge. This is actually a incredibly hard game to find because no one kept this for obvious reasons because it's a horse equestrian game for the PS2. Why would you keep this? <laughs> but yeah, I tried to get this from Lincoln and it wasn't on their list, but when you got there, we don't have that actually, so no way you know update your list. You didn't do your job properly. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I'm not bad. I'm not bitter. Uh, there was a side note with Worksop. Uh, Worksop, I actually, the main reason I went there was because they had a online accessories, a PS2 red controller. And I really wanted it because that was one of the harder ones to find. I got there and uh, they bought in the controller and it was a PS1 controller. Do you know how you can tell the difference? Very simply put, the wires for the PS1 controller are grey. The wires for the PS2 controller are black. It is a very, very simple thing to notice. And yet, <laughs> this is the second time at a CEX where I've tried to go for a controller and they didn't fucking notice. Now, to be perfectly fair, for those who have no idea about old gaming consoles, only do like the phone side of CEX, I can fully understand that. But it still kind of annoys me that they can't tell the difference of colour. <laughs> Yeah, moving on. <laughs> uh, oh, but before we move on, I just want to say, this time, last time I actually was a pain trying to organise with the 10 CXs, but this time I kept them all in the same bags. And I put, I actually put names on the bags. <laughs> like for this area. Uh, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it up. See, it works up. So this time I actually organised. Because you had to, because last time it was just chaos trying to organise through this and trying to remember which game came from which shop, so... Progress has been made again at PS2 Mini Games. The crowd rejoices. Right, quickly moving on to Retford, a better CEX than uh, Worksop. Because, to be fair, Worksop was organised, they just didn't know the difference between a colour of controller cable. Still not better. Uh, Retford was not only better organised, but just plighter. Uh, nothing against Worksop, which is Retford tried harder. <laughs> Simple as that. I would go back to Retford CX again, because I got three games for it, nothing major again, but these are games I've been looking for. Uh, this one's actually shockingly hard to find. I'm sad that I actually had to find this. American Chopper 2. This arsehole got a sequel to his first game. Now, for those of you who ever watched uh, this guy, it's an American TV show where they restore choppers. I found it somewhat boring, but for those who love that kind of stuff, these were your guys, they were popular. And they actually got two games of the PS2. Sometimes I question humanity's choices. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yes, the disc is in the case. You make one, one time you forget to check the disc and everyone reminds you. But to be fair, you're correct. It was my fault that time. <laughs> Game number two from Retford. This actually was shockingly hard to find. The Ferrari Challenge Choro Pirelli. Now, I'm going to do that because I can't pronounce it. Now, there are like, I think there's like two different Ferrari games. Uh, I've bought the other one like two or three times, thinking it was this one, and every time I bought it back, I already had it. So that kind of annoyed me. To do. So to find this actually was kind of a win, because this is not common. This is actually very hard to find. And uh, £5 was very happy to pay for that one. Am I a fan of Ferraris? No. I... <sighs> They're cool, I suppose, but Formula One wise, I always think if any team's going to cheat, it's going to be Ferrari. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of cheating. It wasn't. If you've got a cheat to win, it's not winning. It isn't. No, no joke there. Just serious time with Pierce Too Many Games. <laughs> now, the last game might actually shock you. Uh, so, it, I, in the past, I have stated that sometimes, like, the most common franchises I will, like, miss one game for... And the main reason for that is simple. I just naturally assume I owned all of them and I just stopped looking for them for like months and months and months. And sometimes you've got to actually check what you've got. Just go through them. 
and then you just notice, hang about, I thought I owned that game. Uh, it happened with Time Splitters. Time Splitters, the original, took me ages to get because I thought I actually owned it, but I only owned the Platinum, not the actual original. And this game was actually probably the best of the SpongeBob franchise. I didn't open own till now because I thought I had it. Uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom, SpongeBob SquarePants. This probably is one of the most common SpongeBob games. I've been told one of the best SpongeBob games. I never actually played it. And to be honest, I'm actually kind of embarrassed it took me this long to get it. But it's one of those franchises where you assume you own them all and you just stop looking for them. And that was uh, one of the mistakes I've made. So for any cuts out there, always make sure for like, the most common franchises you actually have them all. Because sometimes your misplaced arrogance, which I had at this point, shows you to actually be incorrect. <laughs> so getting this was actually not hard to find, but after some thorough looking on my list yet again, I actually needed it. And I want to make this perfectly clear. Uh, sometimes I forget I buy games and they'll be on my waiting pile. So like two or three months later, I still haven't gone through the waiting pile because I, I rather I organize this all in one go when I get at least 40 to 50 games because it takes hours to organize it, move it aside. So I want to do it all in one go. So I ain't got to get up and down on my goddamn knees all the time. So you bought a game from a CEX using what you believe to be correct information from photos, which I do take commonly, but then you kind of forget, did I buy this? And then you realize you hadn't. And for those of you who remember about two months ago, I also bought SpongeBob's Atlantic, the Atlantis one, SpongeBob, and I thought that was the last game I needed. So I checked again, and I was still missing Battle for Bikini Bottom. So I can confidently say now, I actually have completely finished SpongeBob. Will not make that mistake again. <laughs> Trust me, I've, I've spoken to all kind of collectors. They all make these kind of mistakes. They think they own stuff. They don't. It's very hard to keep on top of things. And it might sound really stupid. Even though I basically live by... I live when I'm a person. And he went and he went touching at this. He went there. Sometimes, I swear... And this, this, this it's domestic terrorism. This is domestic terrorism. If you're in a relationship with somebody... All they've got to do is either remove one cane and just make it look like nothing's missing or do it even worse, remove one disc from a game but leave the case in. That's domestic terrorism when, you, when you're a partner of a collector. <laughs> it's the same, it's, it is domestic terrorism. It's like moving, when, when your partner's reading the book, it's like moving the bookmark from a different page. Just psychological war. <laughs> I have never done any of this, by the way. Just saying. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Please comment and subscribe. Uh, this is probably going to come out on a Sunday and we're going to start the whole Thursday Sunday routine. So you're probably going to be seeing us on the 17th of August, unless I release it on the mathematics, Adam. <laughs> unless I release it on the 15th of August, which actually I'll no, make it the 18th then. God damn math. I'm br oh, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. Hang on, let's do the mathematics. <laughs> 15th. This will probably come up first in the 15th. So, anyway, and have a good day, guys. Have a good day, guys. Yeah, I just said that. Have a good day, guys. See you later. Bye.